Today's video is on how to calculate the pH of a glass of water in equilibrium with the atmosphere. This is Aquatic Chemistry Problems, and today is January 2022. Let's look at the problem. The problem states, calculate the pH of a glass of water in equilibrium with the atmosphere. And there's a few bullet points. First point is that we should assume that the atmosphere is composed of inert gases except for CO2 which is present at a concentration of 415 parts per million. We can also assume that the pressure of the atmosphere is one ATM, one atmosphere of pressure. And finally, we can assume that the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Step one of the problem is to identify the species that are in solution. As always, there will be some H plus and OH minus in solution. Since there is CO2 in the atmosphere, we might also expect some CO2 to dissolve in the water. That would mean that CO2 aqueous would be one species that is present. However, CO2, when it's dissolved in water, reacts very quickly with water, yielding H2CO3, also known as carbonic acid. It follows this equation here, where gaseous CO2 first dissolves in water, becoming aqueous CO2 and then it uh, reacts with water, forming carbonic acid. <clears throat> in this problem, we are going to assume that since this process is really fast, the concentration in moles per liter of CO2 is approximately zero, and any CO2 that dissolves immediately becomes carbonic acid. Okay, so far we have determined three species. We, we know that we will have some H plus, some OH minus, and some H2CO3 in our solution. However, the story is a little bit more complicated. Carbonic acid, H2CO3, can deprotonate into bicarbonate, HCO3 minus. Bicarbonate can also lose a further proton, a proton is just an H plus ion, and become carbonate, CO3 two minus. So this, it follows this uh, reaction here. So the first deprotonation reaction um, has H2CO3 as a reactant and it yields HCO3 minus and H plus as products. And uh, the bicarbonate ion right here can also lose a second H plus and become CO3 two minus. So we know that the main species in this solution will be H plus, OH minus, H2CO3, HCO3 minus, and CO3 two minus. Since there are five of these components, we are going to need five equations to solve for their concentrations. Okay, so now that we've identified the species, we want to set up equilibrium relationships. So the water equilibrium relationship is the first one. Water will dissociate into H plus and OH minus ions as previously mentioned, and this is governed by an equation, the equilibrium equation for water which is Kw, a constant, is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. And at 25 degrees C and atmospheric pressure, Kw is equal to 10 to the minus 14. It is a function of temperature, so watch out. Okay, that was water. The second is the equilibrium of CO2 gas. Uh, and consider the relationship between CO2 gas and uh, carbonic acid in solution. When a dilute gas dissolves in a liquid, the solubility is governed by Henry's law, where the, the concentration of a gas in the aqueous phase, that's C, in moles per liter, is equal to Pi, where that's the partial pressure of the gas, uh, over Khi, where uh, 1 over Kh is a constant that is particular for that gas. In this case, the species is H2CO3, um, and the gases, carbon dioxide, so the equilibrium is defined as the partial pressure of CO2 over KH for CO2. Now we know that the total pressure is one atmosphere and CO2 is present at 415 ppm. So using this we can find the partial pressure of CO2. The partial pressure of CO2 is simply equal to one atmosphere times 415 over 1 million because it's 415 parts per 1 million parts. And a quick Google search will tell you that KH is 29 liters atmospheres per mole. Um, and so we can use this to find uh, the concentration of H2CO3. 
which quite straightforwardly is this, um, 10 to the minus 4.844 moles per liter. And you'll note that this concentration is a constant. Um, the uh, amount of carbonate, or car carbonic acid, excuse me, in solution will be a constant because there's no way that this glass of water will substantially change the amount of CO2 that's in the atmosphere. And by Henry's law, since we're not changing the pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere, neither will uh, the, co uh, the concentration of H2CO3. Okay, so let's establish the relationship between carbonic acid and bicarbonate. As a reminder, this is governed by this chemical reaction. Now at equilibrium, the, e the equilibrium is this, Ka1 equals H plus times HCO3 minus over H2CO3, where all of the things in brackets are concentrations in moles per liter. And Ka1 is a constant, 10 to the minus 6.35. All right, the second e uh, equilibrium in the carbonate system is the bicarbonate going to carbonate equilibrium. This follows the equation seen, and this is the equilibrium relationship. Ka2, again, is, the, uh, is another constant, 10, 10 to the negative 10.33. All right, so we have found four equations that come from equilibrium relationships. We only need one more, and this will come from charge balance. So how do we get the charge balance equation? Well, it's quite simple, actually. To, obt to obtain the balance equation, you multiply the concentration of every cation by its charge, here, the only cation is H+, plus, um, and the charge is 1, so there's a 1 coefficient right here that I've omitted, because uh, typically we don't write 1 coefficients explicitly. And on the other side of the equation, the right side of the equation, you do the same thing for the anions. So we, we were going to have OH- minus ions, and they have a 1- minus charge. We're going to have bicarbonate ions with a 1- minus charge, and we have carbonate ions. Um, and because it has a 2- minus charge, this gets a coefficient of 2. All right, so summarizing everything so far, we have five equations, which is, as you recall, what we need to solve a system with five unknowns. Four of the equations come from equilibrium. The last one comes from charge balance. And we're going to solve everything by putting all the different terms in the bottom equation in terms of H plus and the constants Ka1, Ka2, and Kw, and uh, KHCO2. Okay. So the first one that we want to replace, the first term we want to replace is the OH minus term. And this can be easily replaced using the equilibrium of water. So OH minus is simply equal to the constant Kw divided by H plus. And I've colored that in red, uh, which will help us keep it track of everything going forward. All right, so we have now replaced one term in the charge balance equation, which is up here, with a function of H plus. Now we want to do the bicarbonate and carbonate terms. And to do that, we're going to have to put the whole carbonate system as a function of KH for CO2, pressure of CO2, and H+. So the first thing we want to do is replace the uncharged H2CO3 term in equation 3 using equation 2. And this uh, substitution is illustrated here. This is the equilibrium relationship between carbonate and carbonic, uh, sorry, bicarbonate and carbonic acid. But we already found an expression for carbonic acid. It's the uh, pressure of CO2 over KH for CO2. So 1 over carbonic acid is this. And we can solve this equation for bicarbonate concentration. And you get the thing that's printed in teal at the bottom. And as you notice, that is a, a function of H+. Plus. It's a function of, and it, and it has some constants in it, like the pressure of CO2 in the atmosphere, Ka1, etc. So we're good to go. That's our second term in the charge balance equation. And the last uh, term that we want to get rid of or replace is the carbonate term. So again, we follow basically the same drill. We take the equilibrium uh, equation that goes for the, for the deprotonation of bicarbonate into carbonate, shown here. And we replace the bicarbonate with the teal term that we have in the equation above, up here. Um, and then you can solve that for CO3 2 minus carbonate. And you get this printed in brown. All right, so we can substitute that in. And now you have an equation 
that is only in terms of h plus and constants. So this means that we can solve it. So going from the first line to the second line, I put in numerical values for the various constants. And I'm not going to go through it in detail, but I simplify it. And we get to here on the bottom. Now, this is a cubic polynomial. Um, how do I know that? It's because if I wanted to solve it by hand, um, I would multiply every term in this equation by h plus squared, canceling this denominator. Um, and this would become a cubic term. This would become a uh, linear term. And this would become a constant term. Now, this is pretty difficult to solve by hand. Um, if you wish to try, just note that 10 to the negative 11.194 is much greater than 10 to the negative 14. So you can actually sort of ignore this term entirely and just replace it with zero. And this will be reasonably accurate and help you out uh, in terms of the algebra that you have to do. But I'm not in the business of solving this by hand. I used Wolfram Alpha. You can use any equation solver that you like. Um, and I obtained two negative roots. Now, these are non-physical because we know for sure that the molar concentration of H plus will be greater than zero. You can't have negative moles of H plus ions. However, the third root is positive, and it gives us the actual answer. And the answer is uh, 2.53 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per liter. And there's some, a typo here. Now, uh, using the equation that pH is equal to the negative log base 10 of the H plus concentration, we find that the pH is 5.60. So there you go. That's how you solve for the pH of water in equilibrium with the atmosphere. A couple of observations. You can see that this is below 7. It's acidic, um, which is, uh, of course, because CO2 is an acidic gas. And uh, yeah, there you go.